Calvinism emerged as part of the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century. Its roots lie in the teachings of John Calvin, 1509-1564, a French theologian and pastor who became one of the most influential leaders in Reformed Christianity. However, Calvinism is not simply the te teachings of Calvin, but a system of thought that he helped systematize, drawing from biblical interpretation and earlier church traditions, particularly Augustine of Hippo. Historical Context the Reformation began with Martin Luther in 1517, when he famously nailed his 95 Theses to the church door in Wittenberg, Germany, protesting against corruption in the Roman Catholic Church, such as the sale of indulgences. Luther's emphasis on salvation by faith alone and his rejection of the Pope's authority sparked widespread religious, political, and social upheaval. While Luther sparked the Reformation, Calvin became instrumental in shaping its theology. Calvin's major work, Institutes of the Christian Religion, 1536, is a foundational text that systematized Reformed theology. Geneva, where Calvin lived and ministered, became a central hub for Protestant reform, influencing other parts of Europe like France, Scotland, the Netherlands, and England. Core Theological Points Calvinism is best known for its emphasis on the sovereignty of God in all things, particularly in salvation. Its key doctrines are often summarized by the acronym TULIP, 1. Total depravity. Humanity is completely affected by sin, leaving us unable to turn to God on our own. 2. Unconditional election. God's choice to save certain people is not based on anything they have done, but purely on His will. 3. Limited atonement. Jesus' will, atoning sacrifice was specifically for the elect, those chosen by God for salvation. 4. Irresistible grace. When God calls someone to salvation, His grace is irresistible, meaning that the elect cannot ultimately resist His call. 5. Perseverance of the saints. Those whom God has chosen and saved will persevere in faith until the end and cannot lose their salvation. Historical spread and influence. Calvinism spread throughout Europe and had significant influence in regions like France. Calvin's teachings became the backbone of the French Huguenot movement. Scotland. Under the leadership of John Knox, who studied with Calvin, Calvinism became the foundation of the Scottish Presbyterian Church. England. Calvinism influenced the Puritans, who sought to reform the Church of England, and later shaped early American religious thought through the Pilgrims and Puritans who settled in New England. Netherlands. Dutch Calvinists played a major role in the theological debates of the Reformation, notably in the Synod of Dort, 1618-1619, which defended Calvinist doctrine against the followers of Jacobus Arminius. Calvinism's historical significance is vast, influencing political theory, economics, and Western culture by promoting ideas like the Protestant work ethic and notions of personal responsibility under God. However, its core remains deeply theological, with a focus on God's sovereign will and grace in salvation. The Arminian and Provisionist views offer significant contrast to Calvinism, especially in how they understand God's sovereignty, human free will, and the nature of salvation. Both groups share certain common objections to Calvinism, but approach the issue of salvation and free will in distinct ways. Arminianism versus Calvinism Arminianism originated from Jacobus Arminius, 1560-1609, a Dutch theologian who developed a system of thought in response to Calvinism. Arminianism directly counters key points in the Calvinist tulip framework, particularly on matters of election and human will. Key Differences Human Will Calvinism teaches total depravity, meaning human beings are completely corrupted by sin and incapable of turning to God on their own. Arminianism while recognizing the impact of sin, Arminians believe in provenient grace, a grace given to all people that enables them to respond freely to God's offer of salvation. This allows for a synergistic view, where human free will plays a role in accepting or rejecting salvation. 2. Election Calvinism asserts unconditional election, where God has chosen certain people for salvation based on His will alone, not anything they have done. Arminianism believes in conditional election, meaning God's election is based on foreseeing who would freely choose to believe in Christ. God foreknows but does not determine who will be saved. 3. Atonement Calvinism 
supports limited atonement, meaning Jesus' death was intended to save only the elect. Arminianism argues for unlimited atonement, the belief that Jesus died for all people, although only those who believe will ultimately be saved. 4. Grace Calvinism holds to irresistible grace, which means that when God extends his saving grace to the elect, they cannot resist it. Arminianism promotes resistible grace, asserting that God's grace enables salvation, but people can resist or reject it. 5. Perseverance Calvinism believes in perseverance of the saints, where the elect will endure in faith until the end and cannot lose their salvation. Arminianism Traditionally, Arminians believe that it is possible for someone to fall from grace and lose their salvation, though not all Arminians hold this view. Provisionism versus Calvinism Provisionism is a more modern movement, particularly associated with theologians like Leighton Flowers. It is sometimes seen as a branch of Arminianism, but it places special emphasis on the idea that God provides salvation for all and that people have the genuine capacity to accept or reject this provision. It directly counters certain Calvinist doctrines, but focuses especially on how God's provision of grace is made universally available. Key Differences 1. Human Responsibility Provisionism Strongly emphasizes human responsibility and the ability to respond to God's offer of salvation. Provisionists argue that God provides all that is necessary for every individual to be saved, but it is up to the individual to accept or reject this gift. Calvinism stresses that humans, because of their total depravity, can only come to faith if they are irresistibly drawn by God. 2. Election Provisionism believes that election is based on God's foreknowledge of who will believe, but they argue that God's choice is not arbitrary. Provisionists maintain that God provides the opportunity for everyone to believe, meaning election is corporate rather than individual. Calvinism believes that election is individual and unconditional, based solely on God's will, not human actions or choices. 3. Atonement Provisionism holds to unlimited atonement like Arminians, arguing that Christ's death on the cross was for all people, not just the elect. Calvinism maintains that Christ died specifically for the elect and that his atonement is effective only for those chosen by God. 4. Depravity and Grace Provisionism while acknowledging the fallen nature of humanity, provisionists reject the idea that people are so depraved they cannot respond to the gospel. They emphasize that God's grace through the gospel enables a free and willing response to his call. Calvinism argues that due to total depravity, human beings are incapable of responding to God unless he first regenerates them and draws them irresistibly to faith. Hat main arguments against Calvinism. Arminianists' Objections Arminians argue that Calvinism makes God the author of sin by decreeing who will be saved and who will be condemned. They also believe that Calvinism denies genuine human free will and makes God appear unjust, since people who are not elect do not truly have a choice in their salvation. Provisionists' Objections Provisionists emphasize that Calvinism limits God's love and provision of salvation to a select few rather than to all humanity. They argue that Calvinism undermines the sincerity of God's call to all people to repent and be saved if, in fact, only the elect can respond. They also reject the idea that people are unable to freely respond to the gospel, stressing that God's provision through Christ is available to everyone. Common ground, though Calvinism, Arminianism, and Provisionism diverge sharply on key theological points, all three views affirm the authority of Scripture, the necessity of Christ's atonement, and the reality of human sin. The key point of divergence lies in how each tradition understands God's sovereignty and human freedom in the process of salvation. From a Reformed Calvinist perspective, both Arminianism and Provisionism are often seen as man-centered because they emphasize human free will and the role of human choice in salvation, which can be seen as diminishing God's sovereignty. Some Reformed theologians argue that these views verge on heresy because they are thought to compromise key doctrines of God's sovereignty, grace, and the sufficiency of Christ's work on the cross. Arminianism as man-centered Arminianism is often criticized for being man-centered because it emphasizes conditional election, where God's choice of who will be saved is based on his foreknowledge of human decisions. In this view, 
Salvation depends not entirely on God's sovereign will, but on an individual's choice to accept or reject God's offer of salvation. Key Concerns 1. Free Will Over God's Sovereignty Calvinist Critique In Calvinism, God's sovereignty is paramount. He is the one who elects, saves, and sustains. Arminianism, however, introduces the idea that human free will plays a determining role in salvation. Critics argue that this shifts the focus from God's work in salvation to man's decision, making man the final arbiter of his own salvation. This is considered man-centered because it elevates human choice to a level that can override God's sovereign election. 2. Resistible Grace Arminians believe in resistible grace, meaning that humans can reject God's offer of salvation even when he calls them. In contrast, Calvinism teaches irresistible grace, where those whom God calls will inevitably come to faith. The Calvinist concern here is that Arminianism portrays human beings as having the power to thwart God's will, which undermines the biblical portrayal of God as all-powerful and sovereign over all things. 3. Calvinist Critique By teaching that God elects people based on his foreknowledge of their faith, Arminianism can be seen as turning election into something conditional upon human action. Calvinists argue that this places human decision at the center of salvation rather than God's sovereign grace, diminishing the doctrine of unconditional election found in passages like Romans 9:15 to 16. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God, who has mercy. Provisionism as man-centered provisionism, like Arminianism, is often criticized by Calvinists for placing too much emphasis on human responsibility and choice. The provisionist view argues that God's provision of salvation is made available to all, but it is up to each individual to accept or reject that provision, which shifts much of the focus to human action. Key Concerns 1. Denial of Total Depravity Calvinist Critique Provisionists reject the Calvinist understanding of total depravity, which teaches that human beings are so corrupted by sin that they are incapable of coming to faith in Christ without God first regenerating their hearts. Instead, provisionists argue that humans, though fallen, are capable of responding to God's offer of salvation. Critics from the Calvinist camp argue that this underestimates the effects of sin on human nature, leading to a more optimistic view of human ability that is seen as unbiblical. By elevating human ability, provisionism is accused of being man-centered. 2. Universal Opportunity Calvinist Critique Provisionism teaches that God gives every person an opportunity to be saved and that the deciding factor in salvation is whether a person chooses to believe. Calvinists argue that this shifts the focus from God's sovereign act of saving the elect to a system where salvation is contingent on human response. In this view, God becomes a provision maker rather than the sovereign initiator and completer of salvation, which can be seen as diminishing God's power and elevating human decision making. 3. Emphasis on human free will Calvinist critique Provisionism is seen as particularly man-centered because it emphasizes that God's grace enables everyone to freely choose or reject salvation. This elevates human free will to a place of preeminence, suggesting that God's will to save is ultimately dependent on man's response. In Calvinist thought, this gives too much credit to man's decision, turning salvation into a cooperative effort between God and man, rather than being wholly a work of God. The Charge of Bordering on Heresy while many Calvinists do not explicitly label Arminianism or Provisionism as outright heresy, they may argue that these views border on heresy because they are seen to undermine essential biblical doctrines, particularly God's sovereignty, the nature of grace, and the sufficiency of Christ's work in salvation. 1. Undermining God's sovereignty In Calvinism, God's sovereignty is absolute and nothing happens outside His will. Arminianism and Provisionism, by introducing the idea that humans can either cooperate with or resist God's grace, are viewed as weakening this crucial doctrine. Critics argue that these views portray God as reactive, responding to human choices, rather than the one who decrees and controls all things according to His will. 2. Turning Grace into a Reward 
Calvinists argue that in both Arminianism and Provisionism, grace becomes something that is either earned or activated by human choice, rather than an unmerited gift given sovereignly by God. If grace is conditioned on human response, then it is no longer truly grace. Romans 11 or 6. This view risks leading to what Calvinists see as a form of semi-Pelagianism, a heretical belief that humans contribute to their own salvation. 3. Distortion of the Atonement Calvinists also contend that these views distort the nature of the atonement. Calvinism teaches that Christ's atonement was specific and efficacious for the elect. Arminianism and Provisionism, with their views of unlimited atonement, suggest that Christ's death's death made salvation possible for all, but did not guarantee it for any particular individual. Calvinists argue that this diminishes the power and effectiveness of the cross, making it dependent on human action rather than God's sovereign choice. Conclusion from a Calvinist perspective, both Arminianism and Provisionism can be seen as man-centered because they elevate human free will and choice as key factors in salvation. This is viewed as a dangerous deviation from biblical teaching, where salvation is entirely the work of God based on His will and grace alone. While not always labeled outright heresy, these views are often said to border on heresy because they are seen to compromise key aspects of God's sovereignty, grace, and the finished work of Christ. Calvinism is a theological framework that seeks to follow Scripture faithfully by adhering to a plain reading of the Bible, which means interpreting the text as it stands without imposing external philosophical or theological biases. Calvinists believe that this approach allows for a robust understanding of God's sovereignty, human nature, and salvation. They argue that Calvinism harmonizes all of Scripture by consistently interpreting difficult or complex passages in light of the whole counsel of God. Plain Reading of Scripture Calvinists emphasize a grammatical historical method of interpretation, which means they seek to understand the original meaning of the biblical text by looking at the grammar, context, and historical setting. This plain reading leads to several conclusions that align with core Calvinist doctrines. 1. Total depravity. The Bible teaches that humans are radically corrupt and unable to seek God on their own. Passages like Romans 3 verse 10 to 12. None is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. And Ephesians 2 1 3, where people are described as dead in their trespasses, support the Calvinist view that, apart from divine intervention, humans cannot respond to God. Calvinists argue that the plain reading of these texts reveals that human nature is deeply fallen. 2. Unconditional election. Calvinists point to passages like Ephesians 1 verse 4 to 5 and Romans 9 11 to 16 to show that God's choice to save certain individuals is based solely on His will, not human effort or foreseen faith. In Romans 9, for instance, Paul explains that God chose Jacob over Esau before they were born not because of anything they did, but because of His purpose in election. The plain reading reveals that God's election is not based on human merit, but solely on His sovereign grace. 3. Limited Atonement While verses like John 3.16 speak of God's love for the world, Calvinists argue that the scope of Christ's atonement is clarified in other passages, such as John 10.15, where Jesus says He lays down His life specifically for His sheep. Calvinists harmonize these texts by showing that Christ's atoning work is effective and purposeful. It was designed to save those God elected, ensuring that none for whom Christ died will be lost. John 6, 37-39 4. Irresistible Grace The plain reading of passages like John 6, 44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and Philippians 1, 29, which says that faith itself is a gift, demonstrates that God's saving grace is irresistible. Calvinists believe that when God calls someone to salvation, He works in their hearts in such a way that they will certainly respond in faith. 5. Perseverance of the Saints Calvinists point to passages like John 10, 28-29 and Romans 8, 30 to show that those whom God saves will never fall away. Jesus promises that no one can snatch his sheep from his hand, and Paul explains that those God justifies, he will also glorify. The plain reading reveals that salvation is secure for the elect. God's Sovereignty in Salvation
One of the primary reasons Calvinists stress God's sovereignty is because the Bible frequently portrays God as being in complete control over all things, including salvation. Calvinists argue that the plain reading of texts like Romans 9, 18, so then he has mercy on whomever he wills, and he hardens whomever he wills. And Ephesians 1, 11, where God works all things according to the counsel of his will, supports the belief that God is in charge of who is saved. This view protects God's glory by ensuring that salvation is entirely the work of God, not dependent on human will or effort. Calvinists interpret scripture as teaching that God actively works out his purposes in human history, including predestination and election. By taking a plain reading of passages like Isaiah 46 verse 9 to 10, where God declares, I will accomplish all my purpose, Calvinism underscores that God is not merely waiting for human beings to decide whether or not to believe. He is the one who initiates, sustains, and brings about salvation according to his eternal plan. Harmonizing all of scripture. Calvinists aim to harmonize all of scripture, even when passages seem difficult or complex. They believe that scripture is internally consistent and any apparent contradictions can be reconciled by understanding each passage in its proper context. One, reconciling God's sovereignty and human responsibility. While Calvinism teaches that God is sovereign over salvation, it also affirms human responsibility. For example, in Acts 2.23, Peter tells the crowd that Jesus was delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, yet also holds them responsible for their actions. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. Calvinists harmonize this by recognizing that God's sovereign will and human responsibility coexist in scripture without contradiction. 2. Understanding Difficult Passages Calvinists interpret verses that appear to emphasize human choice, such as Joshua 24, 15, Choose this day whom you will serve, within the broader context of Scripture, where human decisions are understood as part of God's sovereign plan. They affirm that while people make real choices, these choices ultimately align with God's predestined will. Proverbs 16, 9, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. 3. Consistent Application of Scripture Calvinists hold that all of Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, teaches a unified doctrine of God's sovereignty, human sinfulness, and the necessity of divine grace. Calvinism seeks to interpret passages in a way that consistently reflects God's absolute control over all things, while also maintaining that humans are accountable for their actions. This harmonization ensures that no part of Scripture is ignored or downplayed. Calvinism stresses God's control. One of the key strengths of Calvinism is that it places God in full control of everything, particularly salvation. This is important because it aligns with passages like Romans 11, 36, for from him and through him and to him are all things. Calvinists see this as a clear declaration that God is not merely reactive or limited by human decisions, but is the ultimate authority and power in every situation. In Calvinism, God is the initiator and sustainer of faith. By focusing on passages like Ephesians 2, 8-9, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Calvinism affirms that salvation is entirely God's doing, from start to finish. This allows for a God-centered theology where He alone is glorified in the salvation of His people. Conclusion, Calvinism emphasizes a plain reading of scripture, taking the Bible at face value and interpreting it consistently. By focusing on God's sovereignty, Calvinism allows God to be in charge of all things, including salvation. Calvinists harmonize scripture by showing how difficult or seemingly contradictory passages fit together in a way that fully respects God's sovereignty and humanity's dependence on His grace. This system ensures that no part of scripture is isolated or taken out of context, but instead contributes to a comprehensive understanding of God's sovereign plan in salvation. Why only the Reformed Calvinistic view is truly God-centered The Reformed Calvinistic view is unique in its consistent God-centered focus because it emphasizes God's absolute sovereignty over all aspects of life, including salvation. It teaches that salvation is entirely a work of God, from beginning to end, without any contribution from man. Here's why the Calvinist perspective avoids being man-centered. 1. 
God is the sovereign author of salvation. Calvinism teaches unconditional election, meaning that God chooses whom he will save based on his will and not on anything in the individual. This is reflected in passages like Ephesians 1, 4 to 5, where God chooses us before the foundation of the world, and Romans 9, verse 16, which states, So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God, who has mercy. 2. Grace alone, not human effort. Calvinists hold to irresistible grace, meaning that when God intends to save someone, His grace will overcome all resistance. This shows that salvation is not dependent on man's decision, but on God's powerful, effective calling. Passages like John 6, 44, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Make it clear that man cannot seek God on his own. 3. Total depravity of man. The Reformed view emphasizes total depravity, the idea that human beings are so corrupted by sin that they are unable to respond to God without his intervention. This is taught in Romans 3, 10 to 12, where Paul says, None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. This shows that humans are utterly dependent on God's grace for salvation. 4. Salvation for God's glory alone. In Calvinism, everything is done for God's glory. This includes salvation, which is not about human achievement, but about demonstrating God's power, mercy, and justice. Romans 11 verse 36 says, For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. The Reformed view makes clear that God's purpose in election and salvation is to glorify himself, not to elevate man. Why Arminians and Provisionists need to repent? From a Calvinist perspective, Arminians and Provisionists elevate human free will to a position where it compromises God's sovereignty, essentially making man a partner in the process of salvation. This man-centered focus is seen as deeply problematic because it shifts glory away from God and places it onto human beings. 1. Human free will over God's sovereign will. Both Arminianism and Provisionism assert that human free will plays a decisive role in salvation. Arminians believe that God's election is based on foreseeing human faith, and Provisionists hold that humans have the ability to accept or reject salvation. These views make salvation dependent on man's choice rather than God's sovereign will. Call to Repentance Those who hold these views need to repent of elevating their own free will above God's sovereignty. Scripture is clear that salvation is not of works so that no one may boast. Ephesians 2, 9 By asserting that humans can choose God apart from his sovereign election, these views steal glory from God and place it on man, which is a form of idolatry. 2. Diminishing God's sovereign grace. Arminians and provisionists teach that grace can be resisted and that humans have the final say in whether they will be saved. This diminishes the power of God's grace, making it dependent on human decision rather than God's unstoppable will. Isaiah 46.10 says, My counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose, showing that God's will is always fulfilled, not thwarted by man's choices. Call to Repentance these groups must repent for presenting a weak view of God's grace that allows human will to override God's sovereign plan. Jesus says in John 6, 37, All that the Father gives me will come to me, affirming that those whom God calls will certainly be saved. Number 3. The Danger of Human-Centered Theology At the heart of these systems is a view of salvation where man has some role to play. This places man in control, which is dangerous and unbiblical. Jeremiah 17, 9 warns, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Left to ourselves, we would never seek God. Any theology that elevates human ability is bound to fail. Call to repentance. Those who hold Arminian or provisionist views need to repent for promoting a theology that elevates humanity above its rightful place and undermines the biblical doctrine of God's sovereignty. The Gospel According to the Reformed View in Reformed theology, the gospel is entirely about God's work in saving sinners, not about man's ability to save himself. Here's the gospel as understood through the lens of Calvinism. 1. Total depravity. All human beings are born in sin and are incapable of coming to God on their own. Romans 3, 10 to 12. We are spiritually dead, Ephesians 2, 1 to 3, and hostile to God, Romans 8, 7 to 8 unable to please him or respond to his call apart from his intervention. 2. Unconditional election. 
Before the foundation of the world, God chose to save a specific people, not based on anything they would do or any merit in themselves, but solely according to His sovereign grace. Ephesians 1, 4-5 God's choice of the elect is completely unconditional, meaning it is not based on foreseen faith or any human action. Romans 9, 11-13 3. Limited Atonement Jesus Christ came into the world to save the elect. His death on the cross fully and perfectly accomplished the redemption of those whom the Father had chosen. He did not die to make salvation possible for everyone, but to actually save His people. John 10, 11, John 6, 37-39 His sacrifice was sufficient for all but efficient for the elect. 4. Irresistible Grace When God calls someone to salvation, that person will respond in faith. The Holy Spirit works in the hearts of the elect, making them willing and able to believe. This grace cannot be resisted. John 6, 44, Acts 16, 14 God's call to salvation is effective, and no one He calls will be lost. John 10, 28 5. Perseverance of the Saints Those whom God has saved will never lose their salvation. The elect are secure in Christ, not because of their own ability, but because of God's preserving power. Jesus promises that no one can snatch his sheep from his hand, John 10, 28-29. And Paul affirms that those whom God justifies, he will also glorify, Romans 8, 30. The call to repent and believe. If you have not yet trusted in Christ alone for salvation, know that salvation is entirely the work of God's grace. It is not based on your own effort, your ability, or even your decision. God alone is the author and finisher of salvation, and He calls you to repent and believe in the gospel. Repentance. Acknowledge your sin and inability to save yourself. Romans 3.23 Turn from trusting in your own righteousness and surrender to Christ, who alone can save. Faith. Trust in Christ's finished work on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. Believe that Jesus' death and resurrection fully accomplished the salvation of His people. Romans 10, 9 to 10. Salvation is not about what you do, but about what God has done in Christ. Turn to Him and trust in His sovereign grace to save you. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9.